Okay, hour number two on tap for you right now. Dr. Bill is standing by from Vista, California, which is just north of uh, San Diego and too close to the Camp Pendleton Marine Corps installation for me. But uh, he says there are a lot of good men down there who may or may not follow orders if things get real ugly. We've got some, some real important news coming out of Fukushima for you. I'd like to get to that first. Uh, Bill, hi. Welcome back. How are you? Uh, good. But in fact, we're working on trying to get the the new um, uh, station back up. Uh, what we had to do is I work with David Crane. He sent down a... Uh, yeah, a mini. Uh, a mini. And that'll, that'll be set up here shortly. So we'll good. have it with, 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 of course, a dedicated power supply, my backup power system, which is a propane power generator that f- flips on immediately. Uh, we were having problems with our... My, when you have a PC and you have Chrome, it can periodically crash your computer, and unfortunately, that also crashed the uh, the data stream. So I have a dedicated power, and that should work out fine. Good. All right. We're also looking, if any of you are in the Seattle area, we need someone up there who will put a station uh, on his or her residence. It requires really nothing. Uh, it just runs itself. It doesn't take any yeah. power to speak of, and uh, we need something in Seattle, and we've got the West Coast uh, covered. So, so We're hopefully, starting to see a, uh, uh, a gradual drift up in my other... Inspector Plus Radiation Detector, which I keep in our bedroom, uh, my wife's dresser. Uh-huh. Keep it uh-huh. And well. We've been drifting up from about 35 counts a minute to between the high 40s to high 50s. Oh, really? So, uh, we're seeing that's, a, a that's a significant last, jump? Yeah, over the last week and a half. So something's going on to cause a, a significant jump. Well, there was a recent up. emission there, and uh, it was about a week, less than a week ago. And right. they and, didn't and know that, where... That has not been happening for... At least six months. I would say at least six months. We didn't have that kind of surge. It was actually pretty low in the twenties and thirties. Now it's in the uh, high forties or even high fifties. Yeah, that's and, high. Uh, that's high. Well, so this is we're, we're, if we're getting detection, and that usually means it's primarily going to be airborne radiation. It's longer acting isotopes too. Yeah, yeah. I think it has to do with that recent emission. Uh, let me uh, pull that up here and, and get into it just a little bit because this has to be where it came from. Uh, it just takes a couple days to get across. Remember that. This is published on July 21st. Uh, bah, 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 bah. Okay. Uh, death ashes, they're calling them over there. Obviously dispersed everywhere after recent Fukushima releases. Hot particles attached to clothing. Uh, the media is brainwashing the public. A nuclear engineer said there was a huge spray of radioactive material from the plant, which contained plutonium. No one's saying how, why, what, uh, but there was a big release, and I'm going to suggest that that might be what you're reading. Uh, don't know. Yeah, but, it's uh, hard, hard to say, but it's a, it's a very sensitive de- uh, detector. It's in, in very good condition. The other detector we have, which will be set up, will give a just primarily gamma, uh, and that indicates primarily cesium-137, which is a really good marker. It's a bioaccumulating isotope that's going to start accumulating in the environment. And it's part of oh, the oh, it has been for three and a half years, as you know. Right. The, the key yeah. issue here is that it's not just polluting the population and going to cause degradation to health. But oh, it's also no. going to cause mutagenesis and death in the benthic layer of the oceans in the Pacific, which is one third of the oceans in the world are the Pacific. And it connects to all the other oceans. And as the, yeah. as the oceans die, it also is going to decrease the what's called the carbon oxygen cycle to convert carbon dioxide back to oxygen. Correct. 80% of the world's oxygen comes from the upper 30 feet of the ocean, 10 meters. That's it. The little thin skin of, of the top 30 feet of water makes 80% of the world's oxygen. And if you kill a good deal of the benthic layer of the oceans in the Pacific, you, you give basically the world chronic obstructive world disease, I call it COWD. Mm-hmm. Chronic obstructive world disease. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, the word I want you to focus on and never let go, folks. This is going to be the marker for the rest of your lives and your children's lives. And it's called bioaccumulation. It is, the, right. it is the answer to everything. When you ask, why am I sick? Why are the animals dying? Why is everything changing? Why are we seeing blue crabs instead of orange crabs in Alaska now? Why are we seeing color mutations? Why are we seeing insect mutations, butterfly mutations you saw two years ago? All right, now we get word. And, and let me just look. The Pacific Ocean, we do not know. 
neither Bill nor I nor anyone who will talk, I, I suggest the EPA has a pretty damn good idea. We do not know how dead the Pacific Ocean is. It might be 90% dead already. We don't know. 50% dead. We don't know. But what we're seeing is the land, it's incremental, but the land increase in the amount and the number of radionuclides, let's just call it per, per square meter of soil, uh, is growing all the time. That means the plants that uptake their nourishment from the soil are uptaking radionuclides. Okay, this is happening in Alaska. It's happening on the West Coast. It's happening in the Midwest. It's happening in Vermont. It's happening everywhere. The United States, North America, is getting a steady stream in varying degrees of concentration of radioactive nuclides in the atmosphere. All right. Dateline, Alaska. Brand new. Alaska Department of Fish and Game. Alaska's now, remember, this is three and a half years after Fukushima. Alaska has been bioaccumulating in the ground, in the soil, in the grasses, in the plants, in the birds, in the fish, in the animals for three and a half years now. Alaska's largest caribou herd, the Western Arctic Herd, numbered about 235,000 animals as of July last year. That was down from 325,000 estimated in the 2011 census. All right? The recent census indicates a decline of about 27% since 2011. Mortality was very high during 2011 and 2012. In addition to high adult cow mortality during 11 and 12, survival of calves born during that period was relatively low. Jim Dow the uh, Alaska Department of Fish and Game biologist who has worked with the herd for more than 25 years said the herd size right now, as of 2013, was 235,000 caribou, and that's down 27%. So a big decline in just the last two years. Uh, there, th- this is. Let me read one more here. The Alaska News Miner, it's a newspaper up there. There was a high mortality rate for adult cows and a low survival rate for calves. I'm often asked, why the decline? In truth, said the newspaper, we don't have data to completely answer that question. Now, this really angers me. Once again, we have bizarre wildlife behavior, disappearances, mortality rates, and nobody will dare use the R word. They will not say radiation. They'll say anything else, virus, bacteria, global warming, El Nino, some strange unknown in the ocean, but they will not say radiation. None of these people. And it's, it's beyond negligence. They know damn good and well that radioactivity is playing some role in some of the animals and their mutations and their die-offs. This is a fact. It's a simple. Where did the sardines go? The sardine fleets from Alaska to Mexico went out fishing. They didn't see a sardine last year. None. Where did they go? Are they all gone? Did they go on vacation to the Polynesian Islands? They're dead. They're on the bottom of the ocean, most likely. 80% of the salmon, the king salmon, didn't come back. We know what happened to the starfish. They keep trying to say it was some strange virus. B.S. Come on, folks. Uh, This has to be faced and confronted for what it is. And that means... When you eat animals that graze on the open prairies or in feedlots that are eating brought in, uh, produced feed that's, that's tran- transported in by truck or train, they're eating bioaccumulation in the actual grasses and grains they're eating. And not to mention all the other crap they eat, pesticides, herbicides, and, and antibiotics. But they're getting this. It's bioaccumulating, and you're eating it, and you're at the top of the food chain, and it's bioaccumulating in you every time you eat a piece of meat or a piece of vegetable that comes from an area that has been rained upon because it's in the soil. So what are you going to do? You, you know, somebody said the other day, raising your own food is just about the same as printing your own money. It's, it's invaluable. It's priceless. So I'd suggest putting a greenhouse together, getting smart, uh, keeping the rain. We'll see what happens, Bill. We're only two months away from rainy season. Let's see if they shut it off again like they did last year. Go ahead. Yeah, the um, the fact is I had a, 
on our show today, uh, the John Bartlett from uh, what's called Barricade Fire Gel. And we talked about the, we also had the chief, fire chief off of Palmer Mountain because the fire season is really going to be bad this year. And oh, it'd of course, be as bad as it's the, ever been, yeah. Palomar. Yeah, and, yeah. and Washington State, right on the entire West Coast, so, and down through Texas, etc. What's going to happen is we're going to see flash fires. We're going to see some cities in Texas and elsewhere in the Southwest basically are less than 30 days away from no water. That's no water to flush toilets, filter for your, uh, for your water, drinking water, anything. And uh, this is happening because they've geoengineered to block the weather systems moving from the North Pacific. They only allow monsoon rains, which are non-radioactive, to come up from the south. Uh, we're seeing basically they don't want to see acute radiation sickness arrive in America because people will wake up like an animal hit with a, with a cattle prod and they'll wake up and start kicking. Because, you know, they often people often assume that the public are stupid. No, they're willingly and and purposefully ignorant but they're not stupid and that's one of the mistakes that's often made by the global controllers is that there's an iq gap between the public they're ignorant because they choose to stay at least on the surface ignorant but in actual fact once the threshold of pain increases they're going to get really angry and what they're really testing with a lot of their predictive programming and their uh harassment of individuals and so on uh, you know, so they call stalking, is to find out at what level will people kind of finally flash over and they're going to get real pushback. Uh, pushback is coming because when people start getting nosebleeds and acute sicknesses, bronchial pneumonia and other things that happen when you get acute radiation illness, gastroenterology problems, bloody stools, etc., people are going to get very mad when they realize they can't have a normal pregnancy, they're having serious respiratory and GI tract problems, people are going to get mad as hell. Talk talk to us more about GI problems. Where where would that uh, well the first thing is trace directly line, back to changes Go every four days. So if you get an acute radiation illness, the first thing you do is learn the lose your inside lining and your bowel gets leaky. So you, number one, you're prone huh. to get new new food allergies and uh-huh. large allergenic molecules get across your gut. You get peristalsis, which traps. So this is not in the stomach. This is in the lower intestinal tract. All primarily. the way through from stem to stern, you mm-hmm. know, as they say. Mm-hmm. From your throat right down to your proctor colon, you know, your mm-hmm. the end of the of the large descending bowel. The end of the line, all right? End of the line. And what happens is it means that you can have GI bleeds. You can have, very, you know, bad, we call irritable bowel. It feels like food poisoning. You could have electrolyte problems. Uh, what's going to happen is it's it's going to cause acute respiratory and gastrointestinal symptoms, CNS symptoms. People basically start to find that the toxicity is starting to have cause things like dizziness, cardiac arrhythmias, uh, electrolyte problems, wasting syndromes where people's muscles are basically not behaving normally, where they're getting cramps and they're getting other symptoms. Because remember, cesium is an analog of potassium magnesium, but it's but it's a very high beta emitter, so it's emitting high energy electrons. And uh, what you're going to have is you're going to have basically a lot of people having bad symptoms of all kinds of strange symptoms that their doctors are not going to be trained to pick no, up. No, they're on. not going to be able to diagnose. No. Right. And, and the usual knucklehead doctors have no idea of toxic uh, or even the biochemistry of the body or the fact that this may lead to serious infections. This is the perfect ground, for example, if you have a large population exposed to radionuclide to ending up with serious infections and spreading plagues. So. If you got, for example, swine flu or H7N9 or the beta coronavirus from the Middle East, you've got a weakened population with a very nasty pathogen. In fact, this, they found this in research in animals. If you take an animal, this is back in, and they used a cyclotron in uh, back in New Orleans back in the 60s, that if you take an animal and you expose it to high energy radiation, it takes the pathogens inside the animal and makes them mutate into aggressive super plagues. So when populations are exposed to carry a pathogen, those pathogens are going to be exposed to the free radicals in the individual, and the pathogen will mutate to a more aggressive form. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's bad. Bad news. Yeah. Now, I want you're, to go... Yeah. yeah. I, 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 when you're done, I want to go back to this issue of bioaccumulation in the Central okay. Valley, in the yeah. uh, Sierra Nevada, everywhere. They, remember, they were finding radioactive cesium in the pine needles of trees up and down the Pacific coast. Not every pine needle, not every tree. But that told you what? It told you that the rains came in and brought radiation. It went into the ground, and the tree took it up. 
And there it was in the pine needles and in the leaves. 